What's going on, Fit and 42 fam? It's Casey, and I am going to be releasing about three or so videos over the next few weeks on a bunch of lessons I learned from this past weekend. This past weekend, I spent the weekend in Florida. I competed in the IBJJF Pan Am Games, which is one of the largest jiu-jitsu tournaments in the country, and I happened to walk away with a silver medal in my division. The cool part about that experience, the training camp leading up to it, the tournament itself, is that I left that tournament with so many different lessons. And a lot of lessons that transcend jiu-jitsu and, and, and training on the mats, and that can help other people in other aspects of their lives. That's the really cool thing about jiu-jitsu, is it mirrors life in so many different ways in this sport itself. So I definitely want to uh, share the lessons I learned and hopefully you can get something from these. And that's what it's all about in the Fit and 42 life and Fit and 42 is if I'm learning something, I'll share it with you and hopefully this elevates you in your life as well. So one of the big things I want to talk about is in my uh, semi-finals match. I win this match. I'm going on to the finals to compete for first and second. I was losing. And it's weird to say because if you look to the scoreboard, it was 0-0. Zero, zero. All right? And in jiu-jitsu, there's, there's points, like real points. And then there's like points for effort. They're called advantages. They don't count as much as a real point. But... Like, if it comes down to it and the score is 0-0, zero, zero, the, the person who tried more and attempted more things wins. Hopefully you can see where I'm starting to go with this. But in this tournament, I'm losing because my opponent is just throwing things at me. He's trying, he's trying, he's trying, and I'm just defending. I'm just defending the whole time. Um, and luckily I saw an opportunity and I, I took him down and I got real points and I ended up winning with like 20 seconds left in the match. So I got, I didn't get lucky, but it probably shouldn't have happened. He should have just laid back at a certain point because he would have won. But anyhow, here's the deal. This guy was throwing so much stuff against the wall, just, just attacking, attacking, attacking. And I was just defending, defending, defending. That after the match, my coach is like, hey, you got to attack more. You got to attack more because you would have lost that match. And it made me think about life in general, especially the time we're in right now. A lot of us are just defending. A lot of us have put like life on hold. 2020 is a wash, I keep hearing, right? Like, can't wait for 2021. In my opinion, that's not the right mindset to have. We, we still need to be attacking. We need to be attacking. We, we need to make opportunities happen. And the more we attack, the more doors open. And what's funny is there's areas of our lives we've already won. We've attacked and we won. You have a job. Your resume and your job interview beat out countless other people. You're married. You're in a relationship. You beat out countless other people. Your significant other chose you. For whatever reason, they said, you know what? You. And so we need to take these wins and start putting them into other areas of our lives. If you're watching these videos, chances are you're in our universe. Hopefully you're working out. Hopefully you're working out with us. And you're attacking each workout. We only allow you to attack each workout. So we need to take that same intensity. And we need to put it in other areas of our lives. Where else can we attack? This tournament, I'm really excited about. I didn't get first place. Um... But what makes me really excited about my future is I can only think of like three things I did right at the right time. 
the exciting thing is there's like a dozen things that I need to work on. So I got this success with having all these holes in my game. Now I have the opportunity to start attacking each one of these weaknesses inside my jiu-jitsu game and making them better and shoring up those holes so that they're no longer a weakness. So how can we look at our lives like that? Could you be better in, you know, with relationships with like your spouse, your significant other, your children, your family? Could, could you work a little harder? Can you look, can you pull yourself out for a second and be really objective about how you show up in other areas of your life and say, man, there's a hole in my game here. There's a hole in my game there. I can do more here. I could do more there. How do I shore up those holes? So that's what's really exciting is you start saying like, man, this weakness doesn't have to be a weakness because I've, I see it. I've assessed it. The next step in this is how do you fix it? In my jiu-jitsu situation, there's things I need to work on. And luckily, I'm on a team. And there's guys who are great at some of the areas I'm not. So I can start spending more time with them. And, sh and they can help me shore up those holes and, and turn that weakness into a strength. Or at least get it, get it proficient enough so it's not a weakness at all anymore. So once you address it, now we have to figure out how to fix it. And is there other people you need? So maybe you're having a hard time losing weight. Is there a coach you can talk to? Are you in the Fit and 42 universe? Do you train with us? Do you, we can help you. If you have an injury and things are aggravated and, and you're hurting, reach out to your coach. We can help you. You have a team, and that's super important. And if you don't have a team, you need to find a team. You need to find people to help you shore up those weaknesses. So we assess and we see the weaknesses. Then we address them. And the way we address them is we find people who are very good in the areas we're not. And that what that helps do, I mean, yeah, you can, you can do it on your own. And you can try to figure it out. Like I can, I can do the same thing. I can try to figure it out on my own. But what this does is it fast tracks you when you have people who are, who are better at or more proficient in areas than you are. We, hopefully, we all have accountants, Right? We all have accountants to help us with our tax returns. They are more proficient at the tax laws and the tax code than we are. You break a bone, hopefully you're not trying to mend it yourself. You go to a doctor. They are more proficient at fixing than you are, than we are. So we assess, we address, and then what we do, guys is at, after we start attacking it, we reassess. How's it going? What else do we need to look at? Is there anything else that we need to address in order to turn this weakness into a strength? And that, my friends, is how we live the Fit and 42 life. It's a constant assessing how you're doing, assessing you, the holes in your game, the, the weaknesses in your in your life, if you will, and then addressing them. And that's what's so exciting is because what's a weakness today, if you, if you put focus and you put time and effort into, can be a strength a year from now. It's just, are we, really, are we willing to put the time and the commitment in? All right, guys, until next week, this is Casey with the Fit and 42 Life. Take care, guys. I'll talk to you soon.